you've asked for it, and here we are to bring it to you. The 2021 Common Seattle Meta AM and TR29 Battle. Thank you for joining me today as we talk about two capable, monstrous beasts of bikes. We got Panda Watch on this side wearing a nice tuxedo and we got Colossus here polished up, ready for the day's work out on the trail. So been getting tons of questions. Which bike should I get? Which bike does what? Is this too big? Is this too small? And where am I going to be? So let's just jump right into it. These two bikes, I'm just going to come out and say it, that they're not so far apart from each other. We got a, the 140 millimeter TR and the 160 AM. So these frames, I would guess weigh about the same. The TR came in without a shock, just over eight pounds for the frame. So looking at the two bikes, they're very similar. Um, our custom build, if you wanna see what we put on this bike, go check out our channel, um, came in at just over 35 pounds. And I'd say we got a pretty decent, um, it's on the burlier side, but also on the lighter side for, uh, you know, relatively enduro build. And then the team version of the AM here came in at just over 37 pounds. So I would guess that the frames are really similar. Um, they are not the same frame. I did put them side by side and kind of see the differences. The head tube uh, length on the TR is a little bit shorter. Um, the we the shockingly the chainstay length on the TR is also a few millimeters longer than the AM. So that was something that's a little different. Uh, so let's talk about geometry of these two bikes. So if you look at them, they're very similar. So the TR you're going to get a little bit shorter wheelbase than the AM, but you're also going to get a few millimeters longer in the chainstay on the TR than you are on the AM. Um, which is a little bit shocking. You would traditionally think it would be the other way around. Um, the head tube angle on the TR is a 64 and a half degree, and the AM is a whole degree slacker at 63 and a half. The seat tube angles are within 0.1 millimeters of each other. So we got a 78.6 and a 78.5. So now this will alter on what fork for the TR if you're running 160 or 150. We have ours at 150 and feel that that seat tube angle feels really good. Both these bikes feel really comfortable when you're sitting in the cockpit. Um, the only difference is I would say the TR with the 150 millimeter fork feels a little bit lower on the front end. So bumping it up to 160 will bring it up and I think would be a little bit more comfortable. This is our custom build for our TR. So if you wanna see what we put on this bike, go to our channel and check it out and see what awesome uh, specs we have for this bike. The frame only for the TR without a shock came in at just over eight pounds. And I'm guessing that the AM frame is just probably around the same weight because the metal looks like there's about the same amount. Um, our custom build here came in at 35.3-ish pounds, and the team version of the AM came in at just over 37 pounds. So they're, neither of these bikes are light. Um, so just going into that, knowing Common Cell doesn't do, I don't think that's their, their focus. They're out here making big, burly bikes that are going to last, and you're not going to have to worry about breaking them. So, you know, just to sum up the geometry, now the TR thinking you're going to think it's a trail bike because it's TR and it's under the trail category on common out it has proper enduro category geometry now we look at the am version and now we're looking at you know some ex more extreme geometry with that 1285 or 1295 wheelbase you got that 63 and a half degree head tube angle this bike is just a big huge monster and probably leans more into the old free ride style bikes than it does enduro so they kind of blur lines of each of their intended categories. Let's jump into the climbing of these two bikes. So I put both of these bikes through their paces and I even took them on cross country trails. So if you check out our channel, you see a video where I did cross country style riding on the big, big boy, the AM. And then I recently did a 27 mile XC ride on the TR. So thinking about that, which one is the easier climber? Well, of course, being a little bit lighter and a little bit shorter, the, the TR is going to be 
a little bit easier climbing than the AM. Um, but I will say for the AM, being such a big bike, there was hardly any suspension movement, which is great because you are pushing that 37 pound bike up a hill. Um, traction with these two bikes getting up a hill, you're gonna have zero problems with it because those long wheel bases just claw right up. I hit a few crazy climbs that a lot of the guys were walking and I said, hey, let me see what we can do on the AM. And I cleared it without much problem aside from being 37 pounds. Downhill, that's where it's at. That's where these two bikes are gonna shine and they're gonna shine super, super bright. So talking about the AM version, this bike, I mean, it's the driver. You really can just jump on this thing and just go straight, go fast. At times it gets a little scary because I was not used to going so fast in some of the Black Diamond trails that were just nasty. I would, uh, but this thing just ate it up. No problem, gets you down really, really easily. Even at the downhill bar, bike park, comparing this to a downhill bike, I mean, I feel like the, I, the last downhill bike I had was a 20 2014 yeah. Canfield Jedi, which I absolutely loved. I'm going to come out and say that I feel like this bike was more capable than that bike. I felt more comfortable at the downhill park riding those double blacks because that was what I like to ride. The just nasty, chunky, loose, disgusting trails. This bike, I cleared some things on those trails that I haven't cleared ever or very easily. And I hadn't ridden a bike park in like two years. So that was even crazier that this all mountain AM enduro bike was able to just crush some of these features and it was so much fun. Like I got to the bottom of the, the hill and I was just like, wow, like this bike was just made to shred. Um, so my home trails, I would say I was way over biked with this, with the AM. You know, I have one double, one single black diamond trail that I ride that's just crunchy, nasty. That's where this bike was like, okay, this is, this is it. But on some of the other trails, it, you know, this bike is long. It's gonna feel a little bit cumbersome with that long wheelbase. You're not able to throw it around a bit, um, you know, and it wants to stick to the ground and just go, go, go. Awesome. On some of the flat, smoother jump trails, you know, you're working a little bit more to kind of pop it off things. So just know that if you're not running that hard, nasty stuff, then maybe you wanna look at the TR. So now speaking of the TR, this bike is way better match for my local trails. On that Black Diamond Trail, while it was a tiny bit more work, I did find that the TR was more maneuverable. So in our first ride review, if you check that out, you would see that I'm like, oh, this bike is super poppy, it's poppy. Well, I wouldn't categorize it as poppy. It is poppy compared coming off the AM, which is what I was riding at that time. So you're able to just maneuver this bike around a little bit more. Um, like I said, more traditional enduro bike uh, geometry. Um, would I take it to a bike park? Absolutely, yes, I would. I think that this bike would be a lot of fun, especially on the jump trails. And even in those double black trails that I love to just smash and hit that nasty, chunky garbage. Whew, just gets me crazy thinking about it. Um, yeah, you're gonna maneuver a little bit more, but I mean, for a 140 millimeter bike, this thing is going to just impress you so much with what it can do with that travel. I would recommend again, like I said, bump it up to 160 in the front and then you just got an absolute trail shredder um you are going to go up against other bikes in this category that can't keep up like we said the occam um some other i don't know some other 140 bikes out there this bike just kind of stands outside of the category and just doesn't care and does what it wants so both of these bikes i was super impressed riding but in different situations everyday trail stuff it's gonna be amazing. Downhill bike park stuff, steeps, shuttle days, you're gonna love having this bike. And I'm not gonna say you can't shuttle with the TR cause you can't. It, it, they're just, they're so similar to each other on the downhill. The really the only thing that is different is the little bit of geometry and the travel difference. I'm gonna just come out and say it, even with the TR being the smaller bike, these aren't bikes, these aren't trail bikes. This is not a trail bike and this is, I wouldn't say you're, normal everyday enduro bike. They're both long bikes for their category and obviously they're on the heavy side. The 37 pound AM, while it does have that, you know, stiff suspension, even when open on climbing without bobbing, it's still gonna tire you out because you're pushing that big long bike for quite a few miles. And the TR, same thing, you know, you're thinking trail, I'm gonna get a trail bike. And it's not, not really a trail bike, it's a small, 
small scale down enduro bike. So just have that in mind as you're, if you're looking to log a bunch of miles, just know what both of these bikes are for. They're made for business. They're gonna get you to the top, but they are gonna shred on the downhill. And this bike is gonna shred a lot harder than some other 140 millimeter bikes, such as the Orbea Occam that we reviewed. This, the Occam doesn't even stand a chance against the TR on the downhills. It just takes control. I would say that the TR rides more similarly to the Nuke Proof Mega 290 that we rode. Um, the geometry is very similar between that bike and this bike. Um, the Mega did come in lighter, so it pedals a little, quite a bit easier. Um, but on the downhill, I'd say that they are very, very comparable, where the Mega is a 165 millimeter bike, and this is 140. Um, and then I don't know what to tell you about this one. I don't have anything that would compare to it because it is a big, long, just smasher of a bike. So. All right, so now we're at the part. You've heard what we said. What do you guys think? What, what bike do you like? What one would you pick? Let us know in the comments below. So I'm gonna tell you who I think these bikes are for and what my final conclusion is between these bikes. So I would say the AM is the bike. So say you are, you're a two bike guy like I am. I like a little bit smaller bike and then maybe a big smasher for the summers or shuttle days. That's where this bike I think is gonna serve you really well. Um, also, if you just want one bike and you do have those nasty, just crazy descents and you're shuttling with your buddies or by just having a, having a time out there, this bike's gonna be fun. Even if you have to climb it, it's not, it's not a horrible climber. It's 37 pounds, but it will get you to the top. Just don't have any expectation of getting there and beating anybody to the top. It will get there, but you will be super stoked on the downhill if you have those nasty trails that you have the AM. Um, so, and then the TR, let's talk about the TR. This I think is more feasible as a one bike. It's still, I think, a big bike, even though it's, it's suspension is not gonna tell you that. It's it can do a lot of big things. It's like the little brother that's keeping up with the big brother. Um, this bike is also shuttle it. Maybe you're going to the bike park a couple weekends in the summer, um, having a, some chunky, nasty trails, but also you got to pedal quite a bit more to get there. I think the TR would be the better choice as maybe a one bike. Um, you could still pull it off. So if, with having a small bike, like I have the YT Izzo right now, and maybe the TR for some of those bigger days, that would be another one, two punch that you can do. But I still think if you're doing a one bike, you absolutely needed one bike. What are you going to pick? I would say go with the TR. The TR is going to not give up a ton to the AM and you're able to going to have a little bit better pedaling. So let me know in the comments below. Do you have the AM? Do you have the TR or do you still not know what you need? Let us know below. I will answer any questions that you have to hopefully help you out. Pick one. Um, but I really feel like if you, you're gonna know which one you're gonna need and I don't think you're gonna be sad either way because they're great, great bikes and they're, they're, ma they're made to shred. Common Sale makes great bikes. Again, thank you for joining me. If you guys wanna get a daily dose of Straight Line MTB, what we're doing and maybe some of the other fun stuff that we have in store, follow us on Instagram at straightline underscore MTB and also on TikTok, we're making some silly TikTok videos and then straightlinemtb.com. Again, you guys have any questions, let us know below. Don't forget to subscribe to our channel. We'd really appreciate your support and like this video and tell some friends all about us so we can get some more stuff out to you. Thank you guys and I will check you out later.